This is our real thoughts on Labyrinth. Uh, my real thoughts is that Dance Magic Dance is incredibly catchy, and since I reviewed the movie again, I've actually made a copy of it to play in my car. Um, my real thought is... It's fucking Labyrinth! Who doesn't like Labyrinth? <laughs> oh, I think there's... Well, when it came out, I don't know how many people liked it. Fuck those guys! Yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> I do feel bad. You know, let me tell you about when I first came across this movie, because I want to say I came across this when I was like 12 or 13. How and did you miss this when we were little? I completely kids? missed it. Like, really? Because I saw it I, multiple times in the 80s at I, I friends' houses. Like, they were the, the church, like, when they would... This got played in a church group once, which I think is really interesting, but... Um, uh, that, that's how they teach about sexuality, showing them David Bowie's package. Um... <laughs> But, no, I completely missed this movie. It was more like a daycare kind of thing. Because I thought I kind of saw all these types of movies when I was young. I really liked them. And one day, I th we were at um, our grandparents' house, and everyone was kind of out. I, I think, like, I got there early, and you were with someone or something. So, like, I was pretty much in this house alone. I was just watching TV, and it was, like, Showtime or something. And this movie called Labyrinth came on. I had never heard or seen or anything this movie. So imagine going in completely blind... You seen this girl act really weird, like you know, just like you know, and, oh baby, oh you never wanted me, wanted to talk to me, Luke. didn't you? Oh. She was kind of Lucas vibe. No. Like Lucas's name is attached to this, and I feel like somehow he infected her act. But but like, She's also, then, I mean, it's a young Jennifer Connelly. And and then out of nowhere, just suddenly, one of my favorite cuts of all time, just cut to these goblins sleeping. <laughs> Listen, and I'm like, what the hell is this? And then just the goblins come in, then there's David Bowie! <laughs> and sparkling with David his crazy hair! Fucking Bowie! From then on, I'm just watching this like, what the hell am I watching? And I I, I really, really liked it. I loved it. it. I <laughs> Uh, but the funny thing, um, well, watching it, I could pick up very quickly. I picked up, okay, this is like, I didn't know what to call it back then, but I knew it was that category of like, 80s weird creative movies where it's like the story and the character and everything was not the focus. The focus was an excuse to have all these cool visuals, this little journey, these fun ideas, and these little rhymes well, and stuff like that. And it's something very 80s Wonderland. films did a lot of... Now exposition. It mm. just dumped you. It's like an anime. It just dumped it just you happened. straight into it. Yeah. Which... Um, with no, no real rhyme or reason or explanation. What little explanation comes, comes slowly over the course of the movie. And I... You, you couldn't make this film nowadays. You just couldn't. That style of filmmaking, for the There'd most part... There'd be a lot part, more modern comedy yeah. and a lot more CG. Um, yeah, that style thought. of filmmaking, to me, is so dead. Yeah. Um, but the, even the idea of just like, and we're going to have her be a complete bitch to her baby brother, and then poof, she's in a magic maze, and this all happens over the course of like seven minutes. Like, it... You just couldn't do it. And Oh, and the first thing's going to be... Uh, a uh, little uh, guy in a full suit pissing into the uh, moat. Mm. Like, that that's your opening scene with that guy. Like, it, what universe could you make this movie nowadays? Yeah, um, and I remember, like, watching it... Killing fairies. I was like... Oh, psh, 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 psh. Yeah, no, I would bit me. That's what fairies do. <laughs> I love a film that creates, you know, sort of this fantasy world where it's like, oh, you think these things... You think you know these fantasy things, these fantastic things, you don't. Fairies are actually little pains in the ass that'll bite you and they need to be yeah. gassed and stuff like that. And it's like, I love that. I love it where it takes the this The Goblin King is no not a hideous thing. looking goblin. It's David, David Bowie. Bowie <laughs> with a goblin in his pants. Um, <laughs> I, I remember when I first saw it too, I was like, I was a little thrown off at first by the 80s music because I was a rotten little 12, 13 year old. I was just like, eh, it's the past. Yeah. But like... And now, especially, I just love. Give me smashing that sound. pumpkins. Uh, but now, I now I love that listening sound. to. Uh, Talca, Rob Zombie, like all that stuff. No, if that Talica's was in there, I'd be like, right. oh, this is timeless. I would say that. The if it was in there, right, at least. That, 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 Rob Zombie's uh, pretty awesome. I got the whole. I don't know. I don't um, know but um, but yeah, <laughs> it, it's one of those things. So yeah. so I'm watching this. And, you know, it's just getting stranger and stranger. And like I said, I just immediately accept what kind of movie this is supposed to be. And I just take it all in. Even though I knew, you know, because this is when, like, Aladdin was coming out and Lion King, where all these we were more adult we references were... were there. And I was kind of saying, like, you know, okay, as 
a dumb 12, 13 year old right now, I wish there were more of these references, but I well, knew like there was something, for lack of a better term, kind of magical about this film, and it was the environment, well, it was the modern, creatures. And modern Disney and filmmaking in the 90s became very, I'm trying to think of the word, polished. Mm. Everything was polished, sort of glowing, kind of clean, you know. The 80s was dirty. The 80s was dirty, gritty, not as dirty and gritty as the 70s. Mm -hmm. Like, the the new wave was coming in and the 80s were getting sort of glammed up a bit, but still most no, of those the films... the 80s was that, the 70s without the sun. That's yeah. what it was. <laughs> in terms of the dirtiness um, and the graininess and, and stuff. And in the 90s, there was very little... I can think of a few examples. The Crow. Mm. Um, the last Disney film of that type was probably in its own strange way, Hocus Pocus. Mm. I always felt like there was kind of a, a weird sort of set feel to everything, and it was a little more... But it... Yeah, like, everything was just super polished and, and clean, and whereas, like, the 80s films, you always felt like you were in a different universe. Like, this was a scary, dark, gritty kind of universe where everything was kind of mucky and there were things in the shadows and again you couldn't really make this film nowadays even something like like the closest maybe the last potter film but i think of even something like harry potter or the, the star wars prequels everything it's so clean all the cgi well, but now and again i mean one of the great things about force awakens is that you know it was dirty again yeah and i mean maybe we'll see it come back there. Um, it, i really kind of felt like it re you know the force awakens it reminded me a little bit of labyrinth because like so much of that stuff was really there well, all of and the nice thing films. but but well, the nice was, thing now oh is God, that so. with cg when they do have to put something in there it looks more like it's there than with the blue screen with those fire monsters or whatever well that well that's what made me laugh we were looking at the back of the DVD box and we're like this is so dated it's like from the master of myth himself George Lucas I'm like wow that it's changed pre-prequels <laughs> <laughs> the one who sold his mythology off because everybody hated where his fucking myth went <laughs> but gave it all to charity I still think that's really yeah. cool oh I did Trust me, I'm not going to complain. George Lucas selling off Star Wars was the best thing he could have done. <laughs> um, so I'm not, I'm not bitching about him for that. Trust me, I'm like, thank you, George. <laughs> thank you. Um, but yeah, it just shows you how dated this was, because this would have been like mid-80s or whatever, back when it was like Star Wars was still the shit, and not just shit. <laughs> um, and there was something, you know, because obviously we wanted to do this after David Bowie died, and a lot of people have been asking for it, and we were kind of saying, like, well, Lindsay kind of did, and it's a really funny review, and... Oh, uh, I had one guy on my, we do. on my public face, and we were like, you can't do that. Lindsay did it. It's the law! Yeah, like, as if there's some unwritten rule here, like, I'm like, what? No, there's, I, no, there's no rule book or law here. Yeah, that's what James Rolfe said, I thought, I'd really say. It's like, you know, is there a rule book? Because nobody gave me that rule, but nobody yeah. gave me the, the sign-up list. Yeah, nobody uh, sent oh, me the memo. Oh, someone else took that? Oh, facts. I can't do it then. Didn't I mean, you get the memo, Doug? Yeah, so... Like, if it's been reviewed before by anybody... What I usually try to do, if a movie is done by somebody and I feel like there's nothing new I can add, I try to stay away from it. I really liked Lindsay's the only, review. The only of thing movie. we added that um, was new were the numerous dick jokes. <laughs> yeah, but that's, again, there's just so many that we can do. We'll, we'll talk about how we came up on, with those in a second. Um, but, so, I, I was sort of like, uh, maybe my style's gotten kind of different enough, and, you know, maybe I've been away from it a long long enough I can sort of think of it, uh, new jokes and stuff. And when David Bowie died, it just suddenly, like, that is kind of like one of the major introductions to him, is that a lot of people were introduced to him through Labyrinth. I mean, obviously, his music as well, probably more, but, you know, a, a lot were introduced through Labyrinth, and you see him pop up in that movie, and I think that actually kind of was my introduction to David Bowie. Like, maybe I heard his songs, but I didn't know of, like, the creature, David Bowie, like, the man. So when I see him in this <laughs> movie... No, 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 I love that. I, I just want to, refer, I want to refer to him as the creature David Bowie from now on. Yeah, he's just this entity, and when you first <laughs> see him... The all-seeing entity that came down from the cosmos <laughs> to grace when, us. When, when I first see him in the movie, he comes it's in, true. there's he all really those sparkles, the and, and he's so 80s and so strange, so 80s and yet so not, also, and I'm like, and again, to this 12, 13-year-old that just loves to judge things, I'm looking at it, like, I don't know where this guy falls. He looks kind of weird and goofy, but is he just, like, kind of dumb or whatever? And as soon as he says, you really were a dick in high school. Oh, no, everybody at 12 or 13 is, especially if you're a boy. You're a total asshole. Um, I'm just, now I'm just remembering you in high school. I'm just like, yeah, you were pretty pretentious. No, that's, <laughs> no, high school, at 12, 13, I think it was still, like, you know, 
Well, that, that's like fifth or sixth grade or something like that. When I got into high school, that's where the real pretension to start. That, I am I just, artist. I just don't know where this Bowie character is coming from. Yeah, no, that's high school. Uh, when when I saw this, like I said, I was in like fifth or sixth grade. I'm just like, ah, 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 you know, not knowing. But as soon as he says, what's said is said. I mean, it's just immediate presence. He just grabs you with that voice and the way he says the lines. And he makes these lines that are... Not especially like phenomenal, or even make a that much sense. A million girls but, hit early puberty, <laughs> but just from that he movie. just took command of that role. I mean, he just yeah. totally embodied it and made it so cool. It's like so eighties and so corny, in may respect, but it is so cool. No, it's definitely, and it's one of those movies. <laughs> it was like one of those sexual awakening movies. For a lot of kids, because the girls had David Bowie and the guys said, Well, Jennifer we had Conley. Jennifer Connelly. Yeah. Jennifer Connelly, oh. one of my early crushes. And it's like, I mean, when you're a kid, it's okay, because she's like a young teen. And it's just like, then when we saw The Rocketeer, Jennifer oh. Connelly. That, that's why I think she's like the most. Oh, my God. Oh, she, oh. <laughs> she's beautiful in that movie. No, and, and as a kid, like, um, I, I was attracted to how yeah. she looked, but like the personality and the voice and everything was a huge turn off. <laughs> Goblin King! Goblin King! Well, it's I'm very like, funny. This broad's really annoying. <laughs> she gets better as the she movie does. goes on. She drops that English accent she's got. That George yeah. Lucas English accent. Um, <laughs> we're blaming Lucas for so much, but chances are he really didn't have that just, much to do with anything. You know what the funny thing is? I still want to blame him because that feels like one of his fingerprints. You like, know what? Why is by a character? British guy? I, so well, maybe I that happened. Happened. Speaking of Brits, yeah, Terry Jones, Monty Python help write it um he's written a lot of fantasies and they're a lot of fun um you know i, I kind of feel bad because he kind of got like some of his projects didn't do very well or they got slipped on it is somewhere even that good he, i liked he, eric the viking i, like, I, think, I think that's Eber a lot of gave fun. that zero star i never got that i'm like of all the movies I'm like, zero okay stars, okay why? Uh, okay it's a two-star movie at worst all right i'm yeah. like i get like all right it's only this is an only okay film and the film has problems and i'm like yeah, that one was so slammed. I'm like, this is perfectly fine. Yeah, I, I you want to say it's fun. a blah film that's up at zero stars? Jesus Christ. But, but he also did, uh, he wrote and directed, I believe, a, a Wind in the Willows that is not very good. <laughs> and it is but very it has bizarre. One really, song it has the like. one song that's awesome. <laughs> Made it on um, one of your top ten lists. Yeah, but, um, but, but he really can write sort of these fun, weird fantasies. But Jim and Henson, very inventive. like, that's... That's what I love, like, all of that's there. Puppets. Mm -hmm. They're all Except when it's there. not, and man, did he not do those well. Okay, well, the blue screen, you mean? The blue screen is that horrendously was, okay, awful. That really was one of the shittiest blue screen effects I have ever seen. Like, I was just like, oh my god. I can't even say, like, oh, it was the 80s. No. It, it if you watch this film and you were born in the late 90s or something, like... Don't think that's what blue screen in the 80s was like. I'm like, no, that was bad even by 80s standards. Well, and that's what's um, so interesting about Henson is that you do realize how comfortable he was that he had to do stuff that was there and how uncomfortable and not familiar he was with the blue screen stuff. Because I'm sure, you know, if you see how they move and everything, I saw a little bit of behind the scenes, you know, with the people in the blue suits and everything. It is kind of like, oh, well, that is neat. You can see him like, oh, this will be a neat opportunity. Let me try this. And then when it's all put together, like, you know, either had the hopeful goggles on or something like that, and it just didn't work. It, it and made, and H, he didn't return it made to it. HR Puff and stuff look like Lord of the Rings. Like, it just was well, so cheap. And looking. he didn't return to it. I mean, he kept yeah. doing everything in front of the camera. Like, it had to actually be there. Uh, there are very few times where he did blue screen. You know, and I mean, you can see through some of the facts when the balls are rolling and the. And you know, oh, yeah. you can you're see always the aware of their puppets. You're you're never, you never think like, oh, this is, is not like, a puppet. Like, I know, but I actually hear this from people um, who are just like, well, I don't get it because like it just doesn't look real. Like, why is the puppet more real than CGI? And I'm like, I, because it's there. Yeah, it's in front of the it camera. Because it is actually there, and even there is CGI, and I, I'm. Everyone tries to say, "Oh, you're anti CGI." I'm really not. Well, I, just want, I just don't want. I just don't want it. I like all the I like all the CGI in Mad Max. No, the the comparisons. Like, there's there's uh, a lot of CGI. I like most of the CGI in Lord of the Rings. I like. There's some battle scenes now that I'm like, these did not hold up like that. But tons of CGI in Lord of the Rings is still really good. No, the compare um, the comparison I use is that I say I love Who Framed Roger Rabbit and that they use hand drawn animation to bring those creatures to life. 
I don't want to see it for everything. I don't want to see hand-drawn animation all over in Star Wars. I don't want to see it all over yeah. in Labyrinth. I don't want to see it all over in The Mask. I want to see various types there of effects something used to, to keep the illusion seem real. There is something to practical effects that you can reach out and feel like you can touch it because it really is there. The computer program is not there. You inserted it after the fact. And there is a difference, and we're getting way closer. Like, I feel like before I die, I will see it where I can't tell the difference. But we're still not there yet. I'm still like, okay, that's not there, though. That, that's not there. There are some times where it has fooled me, but it's very, it's very rare. And here's the thing. You have to... It, with a movie, it's already an illusion. You're looking at a flat screen, and yet yeah. you're feeling like you're being sucked into a world and characters' problems and stuff. With, uh, with a puppet... You know it's a puppet, you know, but it feels like it's alive, and the personality Yoda in Empire Strikes Back really Yoda's feels like a real character. Yoda's always the best example. No, no, now that Yoda feels more real as the puppet than he ever did as CGI, and the CGI really wasn't bad either, like in Revenge of the Sith. It just no, but, still couldn't compare. But here's the thing, that that's, so there's already a filter, you know it's a puppet. You know, but, you know, so that's one filter you have to get through, but then you have to believe it's really alive, and, that's, and, and that can help you believe it's really there. With CGI, it's two filters. You know it's a puppet, and you know it's not really there. And that's two filters that makes it tougher to make the connection. And I'm not saying it doesn't work. There's lots of times where it works. Uh, but I think it is so overused, and we're relying on it too much that we're not using this variety that should be used. See, here's the like difference. what they're doing in Force with Awakens. the puppet. You know something is really there. The trick is to make you forget it's a puppet. With CGI, you know it's not really there, so it's trying to convince you it's really there, and I find that much harder to do. Mm. Um, there's a few times they've done it. Like Gollum's pretty close. Um, you know, there are some characters and uses of CGI. Supreme Leader Snoke, come on. No, Own up. No, Pretty no, amazing. Not so much. <laughs> um, but, it, but generally, it's like, it's way harder because there is nothing there. It's easier to make you forget the performers there in the puppet than it is to make you convince you that your computer programmed creation is actually there in the scene with the other person. But like with, uh, with those fire creatures or whatever, how much better would that have been if they used CG to do the blue screen and move them around and stuff like that? Like they did later with like Muppet Christmas Carol and stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah, like that's a, um, scene, that's a scene where I'm like, God, I'm wishing they had CGI. No, and, 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 and there are times, and there are times where the movement's not quite right or it is a little distracting the way they will move say this, or the though, rocks if they, fake or if something. They did and where that, CG would have helped. Though if they did that, it would take away from kind of the charm of all the practical effects. It's like, it's bad, but... Well, no, no, you could just, you know, to me it would make be it just, look a hit nicer. You know, CG is very be, good at perfecting. To me, it would be kind of just as jarring, just in the opposite way. Just like, wow, that looks really clean and polished versus everything else is all grimy and... I'm talking more about just like the little movements and stuff like that. How about this? Like How about you just cut the fucking scene to begin with because there's no point to it? Well, no, I'm talking about effects in general, like oh. the rolling rocks coming in at the end. Like, mm -hmm. some of those, a lot of those are on tracks, and some of them, they get rolling fine. Others are barely rolling. I'm like, okay, a little CG on one of those just to make them roll. That would be nice. Guardians. You know, I actually thought Guardians of the Galaxy did a good job with the CG. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, Rocket Raccoon. Yeah, I'm he like, looked really good. I believe this guy's... But the, there was all this attention to detail, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That I think the animators, they either don't get the budget for, which I think is most of it, half the or, time. Or the time. But, yeah, but like, okay, like... When, what was his name? Drax? The big guy who the did not The great guy, yeah, him. Yeah, I, when he, what's it? I think that was him, when he pets Rocket. Yeah. At the end, and Rocket just like, has like this animal reaction where he shot him. Like, such a little detail. Mm -hmm. And it completely sold that. Puppeteers can do that in their sleep because they're there on set doing it. It's harder to just have an animator, like, come up with that and be like, and the ones that do, like, credit to Guardians of the Galaxy... It's amazing, and give them a fucking raise. Um, or give them the budget to do that to begin with. But it's <laughs> yeah. a little harder than actually being on set and being there. There is, like, a disconnect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, when you can work off of the actors a little bit more, too. Like, if you were to pet a puppy, go, Ugh. like, that. that's just very natural, and where the way it would move, you know, is very natural and unpredictable as well, where everything has to be calculated on a computer. And again, that's not saying it isn't done phenomenal sometimes, or like CG animated films are amazing and stuff like that. It's just that it's replaced everything. That's kind of a shame. Even with puppets, you have to find all these various ways to do stuff. They can't all just yeah. be 
socks. You know, you had to find different kinds of animatronics and people in suits and combine things and stuff where it's like... Can you imagine if they tried making this movie now? I... Everyone's like, they're making the rebooting it! I've heard that debunked. Um... Apparently, as far as I know, it's not happening. Uh, apparently, at most, it was more like, we're talking about it, but... Yeah, there's expected. a lot of Henson projects, though, that are, like, being talked about that have never come to fruition, yeah. so... But the thing is, one, I'm, like, trying to think, okay, if you made this movie now, what would it be? First off, it would be three hours long. Yeah. Even if it's a kid's movie, like the Potter series, it just gets longer and longer, so it would be... No, it would be two movies. <laughs> yeah, it would be po possibly two movies. It would be insanely long. There would be a good 35 minutes of exposition. Mm -hmm. Where am I? What is this labyrinth? Characters explaining it to her. You would have more time spent in the real world and all the things that she wants and this and that. She would not be such a bitch to her brother. That's for damn mm -hmm. sure. Uh, you couldn't do that nowadays. No, no, no. The brother yeah. wouldn't be a little baby. It'd be like, you know... Yeah, it'd be a kid, yeah. little kid, you know, who has like the one-liners. My one -liners. annoying little brother! <laughs> well, we'll say um, one swear word to get, you know, the you know, little yeah. ones laughing and um, stuff. Probably wouldn't be a girl, right? because you can't have, like, a girl in a movie, because that doesn't sell enough toys. It would reverse it, so it would probably be no, an no, 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 no. older it, boy it, and it, it, it would still it would, sti it would still be a girl. They just wouldn't have toys on yeah. <laughs> Possibly, though. I think they would just reverse the genders. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think it would be, like, an older boy chasing after a little sister or something, or annoying brat. I, the, yeah, you'd be wandering around. Uh, everything would be CGI. There would be no puppets, unless Abrams directed and said, we're putting fucking puppets in this movie. And I would respect him for that. Um... Yeah, you wouldn't have the pissing, you wouldn't have the pissing guy, you wouldn't, like, half of the really disgusting things you wouldn't have, it would be, it would look very pretty, it would be very pretty, probably brightish, except when it needs to be dark, it would just have this blue-green filter over everything. Well, um, uh, it would be aimed at the tween crowd as well, it would probably be like Maze Runner, mm. with a touch of Hunger Games, and the, oh, you need to you need to have a romance. It can't just be the Goblin King. So there probably need to be some other. I'm just no. Like, the Goblin King will be her age. That's what it. Yeah, would it be. would be her age. It, that's the thing. I'm looking at how they made this film, and like it was such a time capsule movie. I'm just like, this violates so many. Like most '80s films violate all the rules of quote unquote modern filmmaking post 1994. Mm. Like I feel like films. I feel like maybe 94, 95, post Jurassic Park, post Independence Day. That's when everything started changing for me. It's like now we're in a new era of film. Yeah, uh, post Lord Jurassic of the Park, Rings, Potter, the Twilight, Park Hunger, Hunger Games. Games. Yeah, yeah. That, that was my thought. Um, that, that's when that dark age started. Um, and we're out of that dark age, but it is funny because I'm like, this is... I felt very old watching this movie. I'm like, wow, this is what I grew up with. It is so different from the shit kids grew up with but nowadays. It, and it, it's just so like, I could just look at all like the sets. There's one scene where it's like the giant monster goes inside this house, climbs up, opens up the roof, and you yeah. see the landscape. And it's done all in one shot, and I'm just marveling at all the work. And you would do that nowadays, but it would be this... CG. CG. It would be the yeah. CGI camera going through a CGI house. You'd be going up all these levels. Yeah, and the like camera this. would be going through the windows yeah. and circling around. Right. Yeah, because um, it would also be in 3D. Yeah. <laughs> so you can, um, and yeah, there, there's I, something about that simplicity. Like I said, it's just taking away that other filter of it not being there. We know it's an illusion. We know it's not real. But you have to jump through two filters to make the connection. And it's just so much... Easier I to think make that simplicity, connection if you know it's actually there. It's the simplicity, and it's funny because it's so much more complicated to do it practically. It is, yeah. Um, which is not to say, like, I always hate seeing because I feel like, oh, like, no work goes into CGI. Oh, it's a fuck oh. ton of work. Yeah, and it's we, we don't know programmers, CGI, I mean. But if you give first. them enough money and enough time, the CGI guys can figure it out. Practical effects? It's got, there's just some shots where it's just like, you have to get really fucking inventive. You can't just mm. program it take the extra 10 days and program it into the computer. Well, that forces you to get more interesting yeah. angles and compromise and tell a story in a different way. So, which I like. on the one hand, it's more complicated, but on the other hand, you're right. There is a zen simplicity to these older films of just these grimy little sets, and it's something I miss nowadays is a sense of mystery. There's no mystery. Everything's explained. Everything's kind of bright and shiny. Like... I really feel these older films that we grew up with had this sort of dark sense of mystery. They did not fucking hold your hand. That is the huge difference. I feel like modern films kind of like take a kid's hand like, come follow me, this will be fun. And like the 80s films literally picked you up, 
threw you in this world and says, survive this motherfucker. You know, again, with the exception of... As us, the audience. I mean, I'm sure it's our films too, but the one that jumps into my head like, but no, not, not that one, uh, is actually Force Awakens. I'm thinking about how that really was kind of dark, it was kind of dirty, and even though... Wasn't all lot, dialogue. Yeah, and even though it, it was a lot of repeat, and, you know, yeah. and that bothers me, I'm thinking of just how invested I was and how I really felt like I was in this world, and there was this mystery, and there was this sense of what's gonna happen, even if it's on repeat! Well, I'm still going, like, what's gonna happen? And there there are some films, that, the Leica films, the, the stop-motion films, Coraline, oh, yeah. Paranorman... I wasn't even a huge fan of box trolls, but that, man, that one reminds me of Labyrinth in some ways. Yeah. It's like, and here's this fucked up universe. No explanation. This guy just really likes cheese. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, it's, and the, like, I did appreciate that, that weird, it's almost like a British, like there's something to British stories that are very odd. Hmm. I don't want to say off-putting, but it, it's definitely weirder. They'll sort of have the whole world focus on one strange thing, and like the economy and um, the setup, everything is sort of around these two and or three weird things. And 80s films kind of did things. the same thing. Yeah, it was just like, we're just going to give you this odd slice of a universe, and enjoy, or don't. We don't care. Like, we're here to give you an experience. <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, and those films like Coraline and those films do that. They were Coraline and Paranorman and and Box Trolls to me are '80s movies. They here, have that feel to gritty, dark, mysterious. Don't hold your hand. Here's a little bit of a difference that I, I think is an improvement of what we're doing now. Is that there's a sense that the films made now have to have a little bit more of a purpose, of a moral, of a focus. Uh, on, you know, connecting with an audience. Where with Labyrinth, it's like, what's the moral? I'm sure if you think about it, you can pull out something. But, like, with Coraline and Paranorman and stuff, not only are they good morals and good lessons, but they're ones that are taught in such a unique and interesting way that you don't see that often. I, I guess. Think you connect but even with something like Coraline, stronger. it's like the moral is simply the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. And But it's done in... You can connect so much more with how they do it there than with whatever to a degree, moral they're they doing both in seem like just kind of very basic fairy tale kind of. But something. But that's what I like you about talk them. About the basicness. The connection with the you know the uh, with Coraline and and the parents and and the world. But that and connection, stuff. paranormal, good God, with the witch and everything. Oh yeah, I mean, no, that's, that's true. But 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 that's another one. It's like to, to, to freaking kill a kid off in a movie like that. Um, or uh, Coraline's another example where the parents. And and Coraline, are, they're all really bitchy to each other. Yeah. Like, I miss that. There's just... Maybe I miss mean-spiritedness in films. I don't know. But, like, there was something about the 80s that it felt a little more... For as glammy and as weird as it could get, it felt a little more real in the way kids were It feels more done. honest. Yeah. Kids swore in the 80s, too. You don't mm -hmm. see that much nowadays. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're, I'm not by any means saying, like, oh, the 80s, they had everything. No, there was a ton of problems with the 80s as well and, and things that don't add up. Well, in the film, um, that's the thing. Labyrinth... But there like, are some things we can take from a Labyrinth which I hope we films, are now with films like... Labyrinth and films like it feel like... Certain animes you see where they just dump you in, tell a quick story, and then leave. Mm. Um, you know, a lot of anime movies do that. And there's pros and cons of that. It's kind of fun. You get a slice of universe at the same time. You're right. You, it, it is hard sometimes to get as invested because it's like... It's hard to connect early, especially. Yeah, because they just dump you into it. And yeah, there's pros and cons of it. Like, it, for me, it's refreshing. Because we so see the opposite nowadays where they yeah. so inundate you with talking, talking, exposition, talking... You know, and explaining everything in a way that I... It's refreshing to see that. At the same time, I'm like, yeah, I'm like legitimately looking at this with a critical eye. And I'm like, they really just throw you right into this world mm. with no rhyme or reason. Just... And even the exposition... That Goblins have, woke up! Here we go! Even the exposition, the exposition they do have in the opening with her and the mother and stuff. Like, the acting... Even... I'm not even just including her. Just everyone. The mother and the father and stuff. It's pretty awkward. The Muppets are the best actors. Including yeah. the one in David Bowie's pants. Yes. Oh, we, we should bring that up, by the way. I just told Rob. I was like, look, I've so, made so many David Bowie dick jokes... And I just, I wanted a list. I just go through a bunch of them. Just get me however many you can. You're like, what are you looking for? I'm like, 25. Yeah, I, 20 to 25, something like that. I'll pick the best ones. I, I, I was talking to him. I'm like, well, um, all right, a couple things. One, those have all been done to death. I'm not sure how much original, because he's like, they need to be original. Ones you haven't yeah, heard like before. And I'm like, ones. Like, I don't know if there are any I haven't heard before, because everybody makes fun of that part of the movie. I, I knew it, I knew it. I could come up with them, but I have to really just sit there and think only on that, and but I he, have to write the rest so of the I'm script, like, so, so... I'm yeah. like, yeah, there's a couple problems. I don't know if I can come up with that many that are original, because they've all been done to death. 
I had faith and, in you. And I and I said, and honestly, I'm like, dick jokes aren't really my forte. That's more your forte. That's a nostalgic. That's a nostalgic critic thing. That's not really like my style of comedy. I'll make a dick joke every once in a while, but the, I'm like, I'm not an expert at it. Like you are, and like literally, Doug on the other side of the phone's like, Rob, I have faith. <laughs> Like, all right, I'll give this a try. So the next day, I, like, literally sat down at the computer, like, open notepad. And it was, like, Demolition Man. I was like, what's this happening? Like, damn, I'm fucking possessed! Oh, like, it was, like, accordion, too. <laughs> like, typed out, like, 30 something, like something that. dick jokes in five minutes. So after five minutes of just typing straight, I just stared at the computer, and I was like, Wow. How sad is it that this is my super secret mutant power? <laughs> and even after you sent them to I'm me, like, you were coming up with more. Oh, I found another one. Oh, here's another one. Oh, here's another one. Like all this time, my secret mutant power was dick jokes. I will utilize your dick jokes. Um, Always. Always! My favorite is somebody I posted on my public Facebook and somebody's like, It is a blessing. It is also a curse! <laughs> So, yeah, so yeah. you had him to thank Who for knew? I had no idea. Jokes. All these 36 years I've spent on this planet, and I had no freaking clue that I could just cough up dick jokes without even thinking about it. Although I came up with the fondling the dark crystals, or hands off my dark crystals <laughs> uh, joke. But yeah, all the art dick jokes. That was, that was, that was good. Um, so, yeah, I, I think uh, go out on a dick joke. Um, <laughs> I can't think of too much else to say no, about the movie. No, great. Yeah, de definitely enjoy it. Not gonna act like it's perfect or Even a if you're some millennial who was born in the 90s, even if you don't like the movie, you have to watch it because 80s awareness. You should be yeah. aware of this movie. Watch it. You don't have to like it. It was a different time. Um, I can't see but, anyone watching it saying there was nothing in there I liked, like or anything I oh, appreciated. You like like artistry, there is, you should at least be like, okay, maybe I didn't think much. But about there's plot, ideas but, too yeah. in there, and riddles, and jokes, and you know, imagination. There's all these various <laughs> and things. Muppets like pissing these, in the rivers and killing fairies. <laughs> like they'll, they'll be picture. There'll be something. Like there's something in there you'll like. You won't go out like I got nothing out of that movie whatsoever. And if um, you do. You suck. Yeah, you suck. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hope you enjoy the movie. If not, you suck. Uh, he said it. You suck. <laughs>